I'm Debbie. And I'm Allison. And we're the Polter Gals. Hi, I'm Allison. And I'm Debbie. And we're the, the Polter Gals. Gals. This week's episode is Vorgard Castle. Ooh, yeah. Vorgard Castle. I yes. love a good spooky castle. So this is in Denmark. Ooh. And I, so I think I told you recently that our top like 10 countries that we're listening to. Mm-hmm. Conveniently, Denmark's one of them. Thanks all you Denmarkians. So what are also, they called? Denmarkistans? Denmarkians. That's a great question. What do you guys call? What do you call yeah. yourselves? Please comment down below Please. so we know. Also, uh, don't hate us. Don't <laughs> hate us. And by don't hate us, I mean don't hate me for mis- mispronouncing just about anything in this episode. Mm-hmm. I'm so very sorry. We love you and we're sorry. But it's it's because we love you so much that we're doing this episode. Yes. So yeah, we're so really you know. excited. I, yeah. I What kind of, what language do they speak in Denmark? Denmark? The, the Denmark. language of uh, Denmark's? Mm, interesting. I mean, duh. Wow, I know so much. <laughs> <laughs> you would think I would know this or make an attempt to look it up, but... Oh, it's Danish. We're stupid. <laughs> uh, but yeah, again. it says Danish is the language you'll hear the most in Denmark. However, English is also prominently. 86% of all Danes. Oh, they're called Danes. Dan- Danes of Denmark. Ooh, wow. Love it. What is it? Um, again, we're so sorry. We're sorry. We are... Wh- what do they say? We are illiterate. <laughs> We don't try- know anything. We're trying not to be uncultured. Yes, we so. are not uncultured swine. No. But well, anyway, so that's fun. I'm so yes. excited to cover this. And so, um, y- as you can see, wow. that is w- one of the castles. It's gorgeous. It's, uh, I say one of the castles. It is the castle that's there. The. Um, so I'm kind of excited to talk about it. Yeah, and, and she's old, so you know there's definitely got to be yes. ghosts. Yes. How old is she? Well, that's what we're going to find out. Wow, Allison, let's get in the history. (laughs) So I do have this kind of broken down into early history and then to what we have now. Ignore the train in the background, but... Uh, (laughs) It's fine. You can't really hear it anyway. So Vorgard's recorded history actually dates back to 1480. One. 1481. 1481. So that's kind wow. of insane. So there's a lot of years for ghostiness happening. Yes. And and probably horrible things to happen as well. Yes and no. <laughs> I mean, kind of. This is I a mean, I guess Denmark isn't like too bad, right? <laughs> um, I guess we'll find out. Yeah. I guess when we do more research or more stuff in Denmark, we'll find out. Yeah. And if you live in Denmark... Tell us some stuff to yes, cover. Tell please. us some more things. Send us names of places that you know that have a really, it doesn't even have to be a long history, but if it has a dark history, please send it to <laughs> us. And you know if the place is haunted. We'll then we'll cover. Yes. <coughs> <coughs> Debbie. Sorry, I was possessed for a second. Please don't become a poultry pal. I'll try. We can, you can seance me in and be like, ooh, I'm getting a call from Debbie on the other side. <laughs> Um, that would involve Robbie. Oh, oops. And then maybe we'll some get, of the witches. Yeah, we'll have to get some witches in here. We'll have to get some mediums. We'll have to have a full-on Debbie seance. A specter seance. Oh, no. <laughs> um, anyway, um, well, so tell me more. The, uh, the outbreak of the Quartz feud, it was owned by Stidge. Stidge? Yeah, that Stidge sounds right. Crumpin. And again, if you know who this guy is, please correct us. Sorry. Yes. <laughs> he was a bishop taken by Skipper Clement's army of peasants. And then after re- reformation, it was confiscated by the crown in 1536. I love me a good peasant revolt to start out. Oh, you know, what <sighs> makes for a lovely history, right? Yeah. Just a few revolutions. A few revolutions, a reformation, Just a few, a takeover, um, and you know, confiscation, confiscation. You know, um, so it's a it's a great mix of stuff. All the fun things. 
So this next person is actually going to take part in some of the Ooh, hauntings. Yes. Which, again, we'll backtrack into some of the history. Ingeborg. But Ingeborg Skills Castle. Ooh. In 1578, King Frederick II ceded the property to Karen Crabbe in exchange for Nygaard, an estate located between Vigil and Colding. Wow. Again, if I mispronounce these, somebody please send a voice memo and correct us, <laughs> and I will re-input that. With we promise. The, yeah, <laughs> I promise. Cross my heart. I really don't hope to die, but I will cross my heart. <laughs> <laughs> then she'll be the boulder pal. Exactly. To Crab's daughter, Ingeborg Skill, who took over the property from her mother and carried out an expansion which was completed in 1588. Wow. Over the following two centuries, Warguard changed hands many times. Much of the land was sold. Sad. I know. And in the scavenish Scavenginous? Short. No, I think you said it er- right the first time. Era? Yeah. So, Vanguard in 1884. This was roughly... That time period. More regard. Yeah. So we're going to backtrack 12 years to 1872 when it was purchased by Peter, a politician and landowner who reacquired much of the land which had previously been sold. Good. And at the time of his death in 1914, the estate covered 1,944.4. Wow. acres of land that's a lot of land yes which actually made it the largest in denmark at the time whoa so that that's pretty cool i mean you know everything in comparison to texas is so small so I like <laughs> but a thousand acres i mean that's still a lot yeah that's a you think about how that's almost two thousand acres actually it's 19 point uh, four. yeah but still like you look at 10 acres and that's a lot yeah so a thousand acres, like Jesus, is a lot more. Yeah. The next owner, who w- was his son Eric, Danish prime minister during the Second World War. Mm, we've talked owned, about that a few times. Yeah, he owned this obviously during that time period, mm-hmm. which, which was 1914 to 1945. And then this is my favorite part of the history. Yes, he he. I she fig- put this in just for me. I figured you'd like it, so I had to add it. Mm-hmm. It was or is currently a art venue. Yay. I'm not sure how accurate that is. I want to say was. Just was. just judging by dates. the date. In 1955, Vorgard was acquired by Ejinar in or Bork. Sure. Clausen? Sure. Again, if you know <laughs> that name, please tell me. Sorry, Danes. Yes, because well, a lot of Americans, if we haven't known. And especially Texans. Yes. <laughs> we're very uncultured, <laughs> and then we also <laughs> don't know how to pronounce words. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. If you have not watched any of our previous episodes, I struggle hardcore with English. But that's fine. That's why we're here. <laughs> we're all learning and growing together. Yes. So he was a Dane who lived in France since 1906, where he had become a count through Ooh. his marriage with Marie yeah, I'm just going to leave it at Marie. With Marie. She, the widow of his former employer, mm. an imperial count in the Holy Roman Empire. Wow. She was the daughter of... Jules Emil Pien. Yeah. That sounds very French. Yeah. You got to do that. Wait, which, you got to do the, the... Which, of course, I say that. <laughs> <laughs> I say that, and then the... You got to do the hands. <laughs> is This guy was... One of the great French surgeons of the 19th century. Oh. And owned an extensive art collection, which originated both from her father and deceased husband. Mm. The couple owned several catenous. Chateaus. Chateaus. That's like wow. a fancy French home. Word of the week, despite all the other words that we're going to mispronounce. <laughs> <laughs> so they owned several chateaus in the area around Bordex. Bordeaux. Sure, Bordeaux. But after his wife's death in an air raid in 1941, Orbach moved to Paris and later decided to return to his native Denmark. Good for him. He acquired a Vorgard and with approval from the French state, bought 12 train cars of art 
or brought 12 train cars of art with wow. him back to Denmark. He then undertook a comprehensive and costly restoration to the castle, which went on for several years. Mm-hmm. After his death in 63, the castle and collections were passed to a foundation and open to the public. Yay! So, we love us a public I'm, gallery. I'm assuming it's still there, mm-hmm. or at least some of it. Well, at least some uh, of the art collections. I'm hoping. Yes. I'm hoping. So, the architect with this was actually a two winged L shaped castle. Ooh. With, with built in red brick mm. and the Renaissance. Renaissance style, mm-hmm. and I'm gonna show another picture to sh- try to show that more of that red brick. Oof! Its east wing is flanked with two octagon octagon corner towers and penetrated by a gateway. Its sandstone portal was a gift from King Frederick II, and was ori- originally created for the Frederiksborg Castle. Frederiksborg. So, <laughs> yeah, as you uh, as you know, English yeah. is hard. Hey, we have a Fredericksburg yeah. here in Texas. That's close enough, right? Mm, close. That's Germanic, not Danish, but that's no. okay. But as you can see in that picture, how it kind of looks now. Yeah. And compared to back then, yeah, it was back in the day, that older one, a lot but of cobble. Yes, very, very much. And now it's pretty. So the park, the building used by Vor Burke, is the large park was originally laid out in 1768, and in 1955 it was redesigned in the French style. Mm-hmm. Buildings on the grounds included a half-trimmed building, which in the late 18th and 19th century was used by Vor Burke, a manor court where people who had committed local misdemeanors and petty crimes would be dealt with. Hmm, that's interesting. So. So criminals were there, but other than that, it seems to have had a pretty okay history. Yeah. Just a peasant revolt, a few hands changing, and then some crimes. Yeah, just nothing too bad. Too bad. Well, as you know next, it's going to be time to get into the hauntings. Ooh. But first, commercial break. Yeah. And now, a word from our sponsors. <laughs> so debbie mm. on this week's episode this is brought to you by waco axco shout out waco axco for yes. supporting this episode of the polter gals and if you are in waco or waco area to visit live here whatever and you need some excellent entertainment ooh, <laughs> kind of had to steal Thomas's thing there. Mm-hmm. Be sure, like I said, go visit uh, Thomas. Yeah, who I just mentioned local veteran-owned company. Yes, um, it's super fun. And remember, axe throwing isn't just for axe murderers. Nope, just don't be a Lizzie Borden or a Velasca House murderer. But you know, we love Thomas and we love our veteran locally owned companies. So if you're like I said here, go tune in and. Uh, Hang out, throw some axes, get coached on how to properly, properly do that. Woo, have fun. Also brought to you by Waco Escape Rooms. Woo. Another uh, locally owned business mm-hmm. by the lovely Corey Dickman. Mm-hmm. Go visit Abby mm-hmm. over at the Escape Rooms off of Washington Avenue mm-hmm. and get locked in a room and try to escape. Yeah. Because what's better fun? Once you... Do your first escape room, a looking, unlocking a door will never be the same ever again. Never again. And check out their social media and everything and um, participate in their Tuesday trivia. Ooh. You know what this Tuesday's trivia was? Why did a man born in November celebrate his birthday in the summer? I don't know. Because he's in Australia. And the seasons are flip flop on the other side of the world. Ha <laughs> ha! Do you get it? That's so dumb. But yeah, go follow Waco Escape Rooms for more. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Bro, 
Frozen, Frozen, Heroes. Gonna tell you about Frozen, Frozen, Heroes. Gonna tell you about. Hey, I'm Zach. And I'm Mike. And we have a fantastic new podcast to tell you about Bros, Foes, and Heroes. It's the two of us looking into the world of comics, breaking down some characters that you may have never heard of, and some that are just absolutely ridiculous. Yeah, so Zach comes up with a character each time, and uh, I go into it just completely blind. I don't know who this person is or what their abilities are or anything, and and basically I guess we kind of go over their origin story and just some of the ridiculous stuff that maybe especially Golden Age stuff. Oh, Golden Age stuff is always the best, and we will make sure to highlight all of the shenanigans and just absolute weirdness yeah. of everything. Yeah, that's right. So subscribe today and uh, follow us on Instagram at Bros Bros Heroes. And if you don't, I know where you live. Not really, but please subscribe. <laughs> bros and Bros and Heroes gonna tell you about Bros and Bros and Heroes gonna tell you about Welcome to One Star Rewind, a new podcast about those dreaded one star reviews that every business owner hates to receive, but yet every customer loves to read. During this podcast, we will peel back that one star review to better understand how it happened, when it happened, and what the business owner is doing after receiving that one star review. This podcast will be about love, hate, and laughter. On One Star Rewind, we will meet with real business owners who will tell their stories and how they do rely on reviews for their business. Follow us on Facebook, Instagram, or download us at roguemedianetwork.com. Please subscribe, but only rate and review for not a one-star review. Join us each time for a new review and a new story. show spooky (laughs) all right and we're back and now it's time to get into the hauntings so just as allison had like divided up by sort of like periods of which the castle was owned i'm kind of do something similar to that with the hauntings um, and she kind of already gave you a tidbit, um, a little spoiler, if you will. Oh, no. Um, as to what our first one is. So our first one is Ingeborg. Um, so, of course, Ingeborg was a real woman um, named Ingeborg Skell. Um, she lived from 1545 to October 17th of 1604. Um, she was Crab's daughter. Um, K-R-A-B-B-E, Crab. Um or crab, Ooh. I don't know. <laughs> crab. I'm um, assuming it's crab. Yeah, I'm just going to say crab. That's how they said it in the Harry Potter movies. Oh, you know what? You're right. That's all we have to go off of for our culture. <laughs> um, anyway, she was Crab's daughter who acquired the estate in the same year, which has also received the status as a local judicial Ooh. unit. So, again, remember, this is where um, prisoners and people were brought for, you know, misdemeanors and crimes, blah, blah, blah. Um the highly enterprising woman managed to estate herself, um, which was actually very unusual for women of her time. Um, and this actually aroused the suspicion of the locals. Oh, Was no. she a witch? Who knows? Um, no, she just had a rich daddy, which I wish I had a rich daddy, but that's fine. Um, <laughs> um, I mean, but yeah, so people were suspicious of her because women having rights? rights? Question mark? Property. Pro- anything. Owning property? <laughs> Any possessions. Any possessions. Um, so, yeah, the, the locals were a little suspicious. Um, in addition to accusations of various evil deeds, it was actually rumored that she was a witch, of course. Um, in fact, part with the devil. Oh, no. Yeah, you know, women can't do anything in history, so that's fun. 
That's what I'm saying. Nothing good. Nothing good Nothing happened back good then. Nothing good in this time. I like how I say this, but it's definitely the 1500s, and I always say that about the 1800s. If, anytime before the 1800s. <laughs> things did not get better. Um, I mean, <laughs> relatively. Um, but yeah, so, and then there was a number of other unsavory charges precedented against her. The stories about her evil misdoings are many, and she is rem- rumored to have drowned the architect, Philip Brandon, in the moat to prevent him from building another castle like Vorigard ever again. So where these accusations came from, there's no basis in history other than in regard, in regard being a like an actual person. Um, but there's no like truth that she <laughs> actually might have uh, drowned this guy. Um, oh, no. <laughs> but, you know, women just like getting accused of things. So that's fine. I mean, I think men just like uh, accuse women of stuff that doesn't actually happen. Yeah. Uh, you know what? <laughs> She's getting her retribution by haunting the place. So after Ingeborg's death in 1604, she haunted the castle to such an extent that a priest was called in to perform an exorcism to lay her spirit at rest there in a nearby marsh. Oh. <laughs> Great. <laughs> Much better, right? Great. So like, can you get this lady out of here? <laughs> She's just trying to live her life and her estate. It's like men man. are harassing her, trying to exorcise her. How dare you? How so dare you she exercise yourselves from my house? She just inherited the house. I and know. You're trying to get her out. Rude. Um, but yeah, despite what we hear about her, Irigard is known as donating a lot of money to the poor, actually. Um, she donated money to poor houses and even erected a hospital oh. and a school for the poor um, for the nearby people of Serbi. Serbi? Um, yeah, I thought about not putting that in the research because <laughs> I was like... How are we going to pronounce that? It has the little A-E combo letter, um, which is not in English. (laughs) No. Um, But yeah, so she was literally a woman doing good for her community, taking care of the poor, and men caused her downfall. So darn men. This is why men are awful. Um, So yeah. Ingerborg um, can't have all been bad, though. She was also certainly a talented businesswoman, and she gave back to the community in a number of ways, just as I said, by donating money to the local poorhouses. Um, and so reports of the ghostly lady making her way around the castle at night may indeed be true. She may not be out to, like, steal your soul or get oh. you to, like, join, you know, the devil or anything. Join the devil. Yeah, please don't do that. Um... But she may just want to, you know, be sure that her finances are still in order and that her castle is still just to her liking. Um, And you know what? Of (laughs) course. I would haunt my castle, too. So thank you very much. If I had a castle at any point in my life, I would stay there, too. Yeah. Like, I I want a castle. Exactly. I would live there forever. And I do mean forever. Exactly. (laughs) I mean, it's a castle. Exactly. Um, But again... Um, she's not a bad, she's not malevolent. She's just, you know, again, she's a ghost mommy taking care of her castle. A ghost mommy. Oh my gosh. We love you. Gotta love ghost mommies. Yep. She's not there to steal you or your soul or scare you. She's just there to, you know, um, open up the curtains, peek out the windows, um, and just hang out. She's chill. How nice. Chill, chill. Um, going from that... From a nice, chill ghost mommy, we continue on to the blood stain, which cannot be washed off. Are you ready for this? Yeah, I think. Well, well, in the northeastern tower room, there was, in fact, a stain on the floor. I guess oh, ghost no. mommy couldn't get it out of the carpet. <laughs> oh. But anyway. Unless it's just drenched on, like, the tile or the whatever, the brick. you. I don't like this. Um, so there was, in fact, a stain on the floor, which it um, seemed to originate from someone being killed right there on that spot. So this is, in fact, a blood stain that cannot be washed off. Yikes. This is innocent blood that has been shed, and it's evident from the fact that the stain cannot be removed. The stain was all but forgotten for many years, but when the room started being renovated back in 1997, when Allison was born... Hi. 
Allison's the, po- the fault. She's she's at fault for this. No, I'm kidding. Um, hey, I was just a little infant that didn't <laughs> know what was going on in the world. Yeah, I don't even know if Allison's ever been conscious of Denmark existing, so <laughs> um, I don't think it was her fault. Um, I hardly even knew where I was. And we know that uh, renovation stirs up the ghosts. Yes. So during this renovation in 1997, the stain reappeared after many years that it was varnished and sanded off. And then no matter how much the floor is sanded, the stain always reappears. Just after a few days, it comes back. That's creepy. That's really creepy. That's very, like, how do you... You know what? I'm not going to question it. You're not going to question it. Question Don't question the ghosts, Allison. How dare not you? Exactly. Not going to question but it. But that's why they still is innocent blood. Because don't they see that innocent blood cannot be washed off? Isn't like the thing, like if you murder an innocent person, like your hands will be stained red? No? Yeah? I have no idea. I think that's, I think I, that's I'm canon. I'm about as clueless as uh, the day I was born <laughs> when it comes to that. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, so there is a blood stain, an actual blood stain that cannot be washed off. Um, up next is the wild boar skin. So actually in one of the display cases at the castle lies the skin of a wild boar that was brought down in the castle oh. grounds during the 18th century. As the wild boar was brought down on the border between Vorigard and Hansland, a minor feud arose, resulting in the sharing of the spoils. So have you heard that story where it's like, no, that baby's my baby. And they're like, no, that's my baby. And then the judge says like, oh, let's just cut the baby in half and you each get half. And then the real mother was the one that was like, no, don't do that. And that's how he knew which one was the real mom. So that's what I imagine what happened here, but with a boar. So, like, they were like, no, that was on my land. And then they're like, no, that was actually on my land. And then the guy was like, why don't we just cut the boar in half? And they're like, oh, you know what? That's smart. (laughs) But it wouldn't be a minor thing if you have to split it in half. It's obviously big enough for you to have to split it in half. Well, listen, people back then were selfish. So, within this, Voregard then got the skins and then Hagland, or however you pronounce that place, Hunsland, actually got the meat in the insides. So that's how they split it. So they didn't really split it like in like chopped in half. Like that's disappointing. <laughs> the spoils were split, if that makes sense. That's disappointing. Well, according to the legend, the wild boar skin must never be removed from Vorigard, um, or the entire castle will then come crashing down around to the ground it's cursed so so you get the boar skin you put it in the castle when you get it out of the castle so the castle fall down to get the skin out of the castle mm-hmm. i guess you can a, say to attempt to see if it'll work just like if you attempt to put kids in a haunted <laughs> building well what i was gonna say is as you can see there is actually Skin in the game. <laughs> <laughs> Look at you being so funny. I'm witty. Um, and then last but not least is the story of Rose Denenton. I don't know if I pronounced that right. Yeah. I was like, this one's interesting, but I don't know how Rose to pronounce Dunton. it. Rose Denton. Rose Denton. I was just glad it didn't fall under my category. <laughs> <laughs> so the story of Rose Denton, um, of course, for regards most famous dungeon, the Rose Denton. It is actually situated in the oldest part of the castle and is the size of about a room, which means that an adult man can neither stand up straight nor lie stretched out. So, really, it's like a small Harry Potter closet under the stairs. Yes. That is not actually meant for anybody to be in ever. No. But it is a dungeon, so (laughs) that's fun. (laughs) Um, But, yeah, and And there's no light. There's absolutely no air holes or anything in this room. So, it's meant for suffocation. Suffocation. No breathing. Boregard Castle. Caught you stealing. (laughs) I don't know. Um, I don't know why I just said that. Anyway, <laughs> um, but yeah. So I really love that. <laughs> there is also a shaft from the dungeon to a room two floors above where it's possible to hear what is being said down in the hole. So some people believe it might have been like an interrogation chamber for torture. They would torture them. 
Oh. And interrogate them and put them in the hole. So as you can see. Don't dig yourself too deep in the hole. <gasps> Down in the hole you go. Um, so as you can see, maybe there was, in fact, some spirits that still haunt to this day. Oh. Um, I don't think I would want to go in that hole. You know? No. No. I no. think I'm good. No, that's that's one hole I don't want to put myself into. <laughs> and there's a lot of holes I want to put myself into, but not that <laughs> not one. Not that one. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, yeah, so the castle is indubitably haunted. But um, it's more of a, like, omniscient, like, more chill haunting, I would say. Um, I feel mm. like, again, we've done a few episodes where we're pretty hev- heavy with murder. So it's time to yeah. do one that's not as spooky. Like, not we just got to take a break. Yeah. It's a spooky, but not as spooky. Spook-ish. 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 There you go, if you will. Um, and also, it's the end of Halloween month. Yeah. So we're in November now, baby. So um, we're on the downward spiral of the year. I know. I'm excited. And by the way, I ordered a spooky Christmas thing. Ah! So, Yeah. Keep an eye out. We'll be posting more. Um, and Allison, do we have an announcement to make about our future episodes? Oh, yeah. Allison, do our announcement. So, for the next week to two weeks, possibly a little bit longer, we are going to be doing just YouTube. Just YouTube. So if, But yeah, so follow us on our YouTube page <laughs> to listen. Well, to well, see. To watch. And see with your eyeballs, your yeah. eye holes, so not just your ear holes. Yeah. Um. So what that means is we will have our Tuesday episode. Yes. Terrifying Tales. If you've not checked it out yet, make sure you are listening to your Tuesday episode. And then our Friday episode will not be on Spotify. Yes. It will not be on whatever podcast station you listen to your podcast. It will only be on YouTube. YouTube. But and yeah. what's our YouTube, Allison? It's going to be both on Rogue Media Network Mm -hmm. and then also on our Polter Gals. So it'll be the Polter Gals YouTube page. Yes. Follow us on YouTube. And it'll be Terrifying Tales, Mm -hmm. both audio and video. And then our Friday episodes will just be video. Yes. So that means if you want to see our pretty faces <laughs> and our cute little setup, um, you'll have to go find us there and check it out. Yeah. Give us a listen. Give us a follow. Give us a subscribe. And then don't forget to like us, comment, yeah. and subscribe for more. Yeah. And like we said, if you, uh, if you live, well, not just in Denmark. But, but wherever. <gasps> wherever you live, we'd love to hear your stories, mm-hmm. what your encounters are, and... You can comment, DM us, email us. Email at thepoltergals at gmail.com. Yes. And you can then s- follow us on Instagram at YouTube. At the underscore poltergals. Yes. We're on YouTube at the poltergals. Yes. Follow us on everything. And yeah. then send us your listener tales. So um, eventually with Terrifying Tales, we are going to be opening it up to listener tales. So if you are a yes. listener right now and you have a spooky experience, send it over. Send it over. We'll call you up on the ghost phone. We'll 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 tell your tales. Yeah. Tell your tales. Yeah, we love to tell your tales. Anyway, so that's all for this week. Thank you guys. Bye. Bye. You've been listening to The Polter Gals. A Rogue Media Network podcast. This has been a Rogue Media Podcast.